you ever wake up in the morning and say to yourself, what in the world is going on? The whole place went to hell in a handbag and you don't even own a handbag. I'm telling you, if you want Xanax through your hearing aids, then this is the thing you should do. You should listen to The Randy Lupo Show because she covers everything from comedians to writers and everything in between. She's entertaining and informative at the same time. She's everything that you wished your mother-in-law would be and she isn't. But Randy, she was born in Brooklyn, New York, a different Brooklyn than most, a two fairs over. Randy brings his unique outlook to the show, and Lord knows we do need a different outlook. So now, put down your lattes, get your fat ass sitting down wherever you are, because you're about to see and hear something you never heard before. And that's our host, Randy Lupo. Hi, everyone. Good to be here today. I have a special guest in studio. He is a singer and songwriter, and he will be performing a song that he wrote called Truth Hurts. And afterwards, we will be discussing something that's close to both of our hearts. So please give it up for our guest today, Mark Dacey. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. This goes out to all the undiscovered artists in the world. Everybody who's been trying, just can't figure out what's going on. Stacey, that was wonderful. Truth hurts. Thank you, Randy Lupo. Thank you. I wrote that about 15, 20 years ago, actually, and it's still true. It's for all the undiscovered talent out there that, that you know, it's it's hard to know why you don't get from point A to point B or, or you know, you don't become a big success. It's hard to know. And you know what? It's it's It, it hurts. So, I mean, who goes around chasing the truth when it hurts and you don't really want to know it anyway? I don't blame you. It yeah. does hurt, especially when you're so talented as you are. Well, I don't know about that, but it's a song about that. So, yeah. Good looking, talented. <laughs> yeah, that would be you. And thank you for having me on this special show. This is great. Uh, you were on my show. I was. I have a little show on this on this broadband box office. Yes, you do. You thing. know what? You do a lot of things. You're a musician. You're a songwriter. You're an actor. Yes, that's right. You're a dad. I mean, you uh -huh. fill a lot of roles. I do. 
I and when, when did you start? When did you become a musician? I don't, I don't want to cut you off, although no, no, no. That's, that is what I do best, however. <laughs> that's a, yeah. Well, uh, actually, uh, I was cut off, I think, at, at the age of one, I, or maybe it was before that. No, I started in, in church, like, like most, uh, you know, uh, or a lot of musicians, a, a lot of artists, they, they start singing in church, and I, I did. Um, and How also, old were you? How old were oh, you? Oh, maybe like uh, 10, 11, 12, something like that. Were you like a that. choir boy? Uh, I was a choir boy, but not necessarily. I, 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 we had folk mass at, at that time. It was like the, the time of the ecumenical council and things were changing, and they decided that a guitar wasn't an instrument from the devil. So they actually said, it's okay, bring it into the church. Come on, keep it down, keep it low. Folk guitars only, no electric, thank you. And and then, yeah, so. And what kind of church was this again? A Catholic church. Catholic in, church. In Belleville, New Jersey, yeah, right down the road, over the hill, through the dale. Now, did you know you could sing, or is it just something that your parents said, oh, Mark, you're going to be singing in church? How after, did this come about? After the Beatles were on Ed Sullivan, it was, it was like, you know, I'm going to be a Beatle. Yeah, I'm going to, because one of them will get sick once, and I'll be able to, I, right here, I've been working on it. <laughs> I've been so, the understudy. I, <laughs> at home, with the folk guitar, I got it. So, yeah, I wanted to, I wanted to be a Beatle. Yeah, absolutely. Carved out things out of cardboard, you know, went to our garage where we had like, woo, we even had girls outside the garage going, ah! So you had bands at a very young age? Well, we, they, we weren't really playing at that time. We just were, they were cardboard. Right. So, <laughs> but yeah, then later, within a couple of years, we were all playing guitars, yeah. And then we, you know, we, we started performing in, in church. Those cardboard um, bands sounds like something Yoko Ono would be very interested in. Yeah, yeah, she's kind of a plastic Ono band thing all yeah. by herself. So it would be, yeah, like sort of a, a yes, yeah, so it would be a work of art. Absolutely. It was. I mean, I went down in, into my basement. And I painted them with silver paint, and they probably went into my brain at that time. You know, and and I, I Paul McCartney's thing had to be brown, you know, and it had to be the opposite way around. It was crazy. It was. It was they looked great. Yeah, they were met on the cardboard. It was fun. It was fun time. Fun time. Good times. And what about in high school? What did you do in high school? Were you in a band? Did you act? What What did you do? I got I did some early acting with the with the drama club and stuff like that. We did South Pacific. We did Brigadoon, Carousel, and I always wanted to do um, West Side Story. And in fact, I still want to do West Side Story. The only problem is the only part I can play now is Doc, the old guy. <laughs> Riff, hey, you, you gotta be watch out for those sharks. Because, you know, that's like what I could do. I always wanted to do Tony. Maria, Maria. Now, now all I got is Doc. I, I could do Doc now, the old guy in the, in the candy store. Anyway, but yeah, and we were in those productions, and uh, I was in folk mass there, too. Right. And we had little little folk groups, too, because, I mean, folk music was everywhere at that time. Peter, Paul, and Mary, uh, uh, Simon and Garfunkel, and, of course, the Beatles. Um, so, yeah, we had these little groups and things, and it was fun. And, and we would play and, and get together. After school, during school, stuff it was wonderful. It was a good learning experience. Of course. Yeah, everybody uh, would trade. Uh, how do you play that thing? Oh, you do it this way. Oh, you do it that way. That's kind of cool. So, and then, or they would, they would know me as the guy with the cardboard guitar. And know. coming up to present, though, you just performed last night. Where were you last night? Yeah, last night I was at a place called the Second Half in Denville. It's groovy. It's now it's happening. And uh, I've been playing there for I don't know, a good 25, 30 years, on and off. You know, and. Uh, it just moved down the street from where it used to be because uh, it burned down. Uh, I played one night and I left, and then I came back like the next day because uh, I lived in the area at the time, and it was burned down. Oh, it had God. burned down during the night. But the guy, uh, he's a real uh, a staunch believer in in, in, in live music and, and having a place and, and opening a wonderful restaurant down the street. So he re rebuilt the place. So anyway, making the story more tediously boring. That's where I was last night. Now let me ask you: If somebody would like to see you in an upcoming performance, can you please give your website so that they sure. can see where you'll be? Yes, yes, yes. That's uh, markdacy.com. Easy to remember. That's my name. Markdacy.com. Kind of and, uh, and you can Facebook me or uh, email me. Everything is on the on the website, uh, uh, you know, wonderfully uh, crafted by Video Craft Works, our illustrious leader, uh, Pat Maruki, uh, taking the reins on, on, uh, on the uh, website and putting it together Fantastic. for me. Fantastic. That's yeah. good to know. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Well, you know, it's so nice of you to have me on the show and, and share your time with, with me. It's well, it's, really my, nice. it's my pleasure. It's my pleasure to have you. It really is. So, you, you know, you, you have a lot on your plate. You're a musician. You're a performer. Mm. You're a husband. You're a dad. So, you know, how, how do you fit this all in? 
Well, you know, as uh, as the father of an autistic child, uh, 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 things changed about you know uh, you know ten years ago when when uh, when my son came along and uh, and we got an early diagnosis, which was the most how, important. How thing. how old was your son when he was diagnosed with he autism? He was about two and a half, three, uh, going on, uh, yeah, th- uh, like three, three and a half, I should say. Can I ask you when did you notice that? That there may, might be some issues. What what age did you notice? Was that the age two and a half or three that you noticed? Did you notice earlier? No, I would say at that time and some of the early uh, uh, the early uh, uh, symptoms, uh, the symptomology uh, of, of autism uh, can can demonstrate itself through uh, toe walking, a lot of toe walking. Uh, Hand flapping, yeah. uh, an inability to, uh, to to do integrated play. You, know, you roll the ball. You expect maybe someone to roll the ball back. Didn't happen. Um, and and uh, uh, one-on-one um, contact, eye contact, very important. Not not there, and not a response to the name initially. You know, you would you would call his name, and uh, uh, so those are the early kind of warning signs. They're not necessarily definitive, but if you're a parent who is concerned, and 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 uh, you know, I'm not really preaching. To, to the choir, I'm actually saying that to uh, folks uh, who maybe uh, are concerned about the possibility of, uh, of autism. And if you live in New Jersey, I think it's one out of 85 children now will be diagnosed yes. with autism or some form of it, uh, either Asperger's or ADHD or in a number of um, ADD. Uh, so, uh, yeah, well, some of the most important aspects of that, diagnostically speaking, are, of course, the, the, the stimming. They call it stimming, as in a stimulus. Um, and, um, and the toe walking, as, as I said, the inability uh, to, to appropriately play uh, with toys, uh, the inability to uh, say, if you have a ball, you're going to roll it. But maybe with an autistic child, he's not going to roll it. He's going to do other things with it. So it's inappropriate so is play. So he, he's look more like looking at it, bending it, twisting yeah. it. To, to... Uh, all kinds of different things, you know, like that in place. So those are uh, warning signs. And really, you should have a pediatric physician diagnose early and early intervention and, and early treatment and then add Advocate, advocate, advocate for your child as he gets older because that's the most important thing to dedicate yourself to. Absolutely. Can I just ask you, were there were there language delays as well? There were, and there continue to be, um, and that's that's a learning uh, disability. Uh, that's that that's part of uh, of, of his um, uh, setback uh, of of his uh, you know diagnosis. Um, and he does have special classes. He ha- he's in a special school, uh, something that I think any um, parent should dedicate themselves to, and that is uh, understanding how the school system will help you or not help you, in which case you should really know what your rights are and, if necessary, find a um, How do um, you know what your rights are? Well, you know, they, uh, you can ask your district. Your school district should uh, give you uh, uh, information that is specific to um, autism and specific to special needs um, uh, uh, children. Um, and and it's a, like a bill of rights. Um, appropriate education is what you're entitled to in a public educational uh, setting. And if they cannot provide you with that appropriate uh, education, especially in the in in the uh, um, by way of, of 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 educating an autistic child in a mainstream, they have to provide you with an alternative. And uh, our district is very supportive. Uh, but we uh, did still have to advocate, and uh, and legally it is it's advisable to get um, a lawyer who is a special needs lawyer who knows uh, what the law is and how to implement it and and how to uh, uh, assert yourself, how to be uh, you know. Uh, now, do supportive. you do you need a lawyer only when things when the child is not getting their needs, or do you feel that everyone needs a lawyer? No, I don't think it's important to have a lawyer if you're living in a community or a district that is very supportive, and you can find out. Uh, you know that by talking to the district and how many kids are are being sent uh, what's called out of district <clears throat> to special schools uh, for uh, to to have those special needs met and 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 uh, and uh, uh, and um, treated uh, in special settings. Um, many uh, uh, schools are based on ABA, which is a behavioral therapy, uh, which helps the child learn in a particular form and a particular format uh, in, 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 in a particular routine. Uh, a lot of uh, uh, autistic children respond to routine. Yes. And uh, it's very helpful to them. Where in a, in a mainstream uh, setting, like in a regular public school, they might get pullouts or they may have like a tutor, but at the same time, that can be an ostracist. 
they can be ostracized or, or, or they can be in individually uh, bullied because of, 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 their, of their special needs, because of their inabilities. So, uh, but it's important always to know that you can, um, you know, get those uh, uh, rights and read them. Uh, and know what they are and talk to your district. If they become, you know, uh, 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 if there's an antipathy that develops, then I, I would suggest that you talk to, to a lawyer, you know, which can be costly. And, and just having a, a kid is costly because it's a dedication of your time, your energy, and your finances. And understand that that's, that's really what you're going to do. If you're going to establish that child, if you're going to give him a, a life without, you know, in the future, you know, just a, a, an inability to deal with in society. So you have to do it early. Of course. Would well, you... I'm, really, <laughs> I'm really advocating here. Yes, and that's, that's yeah. wonderful. You're his dad. Yes. Who, who could blame you? Would, would you like to keep your son out of a mainstream <clears throat> class? I think it's always, um, <clears throat> I think it's always uh, I important to know that there can be integration. Um, at this point, I think he's excelling uh, within the parameters of, of, of this uh, special ed educational institution. Um, which is a public in which is a public school. No, it's a private school. He is in a private yeah. school. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the uh, district has been supportive of, of, of that. He's uh, he's he's able to uh, he's able to contribute uh, scholastically. He's able to contribute to uh, clubs that they have in school. He's able to. Um, uh, express himself within his disability. Um, and he's around other kids who have disabilities too. So uh, it's not that uh, you know they're forming uh, a membership. They're, I don't think they're all aware of the fact that any of them are in any way different than most kids. Um, it, but I, I, I feel, and my wife feels, and, and the district is also supportive of the fact that, that you know he is getting the help that he needs at this particular juncture. And you're seeing improvement you, yeah. on yeah. his level. You're seeing yeah. improvement. Yeah. Can I ask you something? You're a musician. How does your son react to music? Oh, he loves music, um, but he wants to be the director. You know, he wants to be like Pat Maruki, our director. He wants to tell us where to sit, how to get up, where to turn on. Oh, that's too loud. Oh, no. But, you, you know, well, listen, can you play another song, please? Okay, fine. You know. So and, he's very self-directed. He, he's oh, not he looking is. for you to tell him. Oh, no. Show yeah. Him. yeah, no. And I would like to. And, and I have tried to, like, you know, here's the guitar. Uh, and, and look, if you put your fingers, oh, no, no, no. You know, you know, I'll you know I'll do it at my own and and you know at sometimes he he has picked up the guitar or he ha he had a, a, with a drum for a while it was funny and we used to do uh, help by the Beatles and it was great man he was like a natural and he is but uh, uh, it has to be on his terms as as most things are sure uh, you, you know. Um, because he doesn't process um, uh, thought and he doesn't process his environment the way that most of us do. So uh, in order for him to get interested in something and, and, and for me to understand how to uh, continue that interest or, 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 or to, uh, uh, to uh, uh, incentivize it, you know, is, is, is part of the way that his world functions. And uh, you're a special uh, needs uh, uh Teacher, or are you not? You you actually uh, you're involved in this to a certain extent, and this is what what you yeah, do. So and, you're and very I close think to that. A, yeah, it, it is, and I, I think these children are wonderful, Aren't and I think they? they deserve everything. I think mm -hmm. they deserve the world. Mm -hmm. They're it's it's so important to help them get out, you know, from from inside. And sometimes they do when you least expect it. I find mm -hmm. sometimes you're like. Mm. Did they really say that? Yeah. Did they really say that? Like, where did that come from? How do we get them? How do we get that reaction again? Yeah, exactly. Don't you want to do that? You want to, like, wow, that was great. I wonder what, what transpired to make him say that in a way. Like, my, I had a friend over the other day, and he came downstairs, and he said, I'm going to bed, everybody. Hey, that music sounds great that you guys are playing. Nice, nice to meet you, Bill. And he put out his hand, and he, and he said, okay, now, uh, don't make too much noise. We're going to bed. It was like, uh, normally those those kinds of connective ideas don't happen in that way. And I, I was very impressed. And I didn't want to say, you know, to him, that was great. Man, uh, remember what you said. Remember how you did that. You know, I was like, hey, okay, Zach, uh, we'll see you. Good night now. Uh, so that, that's nice, you know. Absolutely. You know, right. But you want to Those are gifts. That. When that happens, it's definitely yeah. a gift. Yeah. And, and, and it and doesn't then, happen for everyone. I mean, we have to be clear about that. It, every child is not going to do that. Mm -hmm. When it happens, it's very, very special. Mm -hmm. But even if it doesn't happen, my feeling is that they have a very rich inner life. You may not have access to it, but that doesn't mean there's not a lot going on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think it's very important for people to understand that. Yeah. Um, 
That inner life is very important. That's a very good point. Uh, that's absolutely uh, uh, es essential to understand that, that, there, that there is a, an inner life. There's a lot of scripting that goes on, too. A lot of mem memorization, a, a lot of, uh, uh, they call that, uh, uh, it's been a while since I, I spoke the jargon. Um, Put it in your uh, language. Yeah, just scripting. Uh, yeah, uh, mum mumbling things that have been heard on a, on, a, on a TV show or you know in a game or, or, or you know at a uh, you know an, an event that uh, he's attended or or that the autistic child has it attended. I see I see this a lot. You know, it's the scripting. The uh, uh, four score and seven years ago, my our forefathers. I'm just using the same thing now, but he wouldn't be saying Abraham Lincoln, but that would be nice too. But. Um, you know, so there's always there's always a, a wheels turning, and you want to know about that inner the inner life, you know. And it's not like you can say, "Why are you talking that way?" Or you can't just ask them, you know. Right, they mm -hmm. won't be able to answer no. you most yeah, of the time. Right. They will not be able to. Right. But but as long as you know, and people are aware that mm -hmm. there is a lot going on. Yeah, and, and it's and it's whether you can understand world. it or not is yeah. inconsequential. You right. just need you just need to know. I was I was, I was always I was always taught to assume competence mm -hmm. when you when, when you're dealing mm -hmm. when you're dealing with and, them. and respect. And, yeah, right, utmost respect mm -hmm. and. And you know what? When he uh, because he acts differently in public. Uh, one time we were on a train, uh, and he was not having it. He was having a bad day. wasn't processing things. Were going by very. There was lots of noise and people, um, and it was hard for for him to deal with it. So he started yelling and screaming and stuff. And I just had to stand up in the middle of the car and say, "Excuse me, folks. I'm the father of an autistic child, and he's having a bad day. And I'm really sorry that some of you are, you know, are." are offended by because I was getting you know you were getting stares I was when getting this... remarks like hey why don't you do something you know and, and and a couple of people stood up and said you know what I'm a father of an autistic child and you're doing a great job so I said thank you very much I'm going to take take them to the end of the car and just talk to them but you know just return to your lives and just understand that, that you know that that's what the situation is and he's not being nasty to you in any way that so, was very brave of yeah. you what do you do you think more or more parents of autistic children or special needs children need to do this need to speak out more like how but because you get, I'm assuming you probably get ostracized and get stares all the time. Like, oh, don't they discipline their child? Yeah, oh, absolutely, like for people all the time. That yeah. don't understand. Yeah, you have to develop a little bit of armor to that, you know, and you have to just let it kind of bounce off you, you know, or let it slide off you. Because if you don't, uh, you'll drive yourself crazy trying to convince the world that you're doing the right thing, or that other, that other people don't think that you're doing the right thing. And it's you know, then you get into like a, a cycle. You just have to kind of move on with him or her and understand that that's the important thing to do at the moment, not the way that you feel about how, how people think about what's going on. You know. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. I, I'd like to ask you, when, when your son comes home f from school, are you there to greet him? Yeah. Are you the parent? Every that, day, yeah. Um, which yeah. I give you a lot of credit for. Yeah. So your wife works. And well, you... that, that song, that, uh, you know, Truth Hurts, I mean, it's about really kind of struggling uh, as an artist. You know, all the struggling artists are trying to, you know, they're trying to write a song. They're, they're you know, they're, they're trying to uh, paint a painting. They're doing graphic arts. They're, 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 they're doing a, a, a podcast. They're, they're, they're creating something, you know. And uh, we don't always get, uh, you know, recognized or you don't always get successful in what, in what you're doing in a big way and start making money. So it was uh, my, my, my wife's and I's decision to, um, uh, you know, for her to make the money and go out every day. Uh, and and uh, since being an artist, I wasn't making a heck of a lot of money. It's very fulfilling in many ways. But uh, as far as keeping the family together, once uh, our son came along, uh, you know, it was important for, for uh, the bigger money maker to, to go out and follow the career sure. while I kind of took a, you know, took a back seat. So, but, uh, you know, uh, and that's something that we had to figure out. I mean, and the truth hurts, you know. Uh, the truth does yeah. hurt. Yeah. Had, had, what would, if, if I could ask you, what was it like, especially in the earlier years, and, and even mm. now, um, when you when you try to talk to your son and and try to get information and it's not always easy and you're not really getting direct answers, how do, how does a parent deal with that? Well, every day is an adventure. Every every day is just a different kind of place to be, and you're not. You sometimes you're just not going to be able to assimilate the whole. Uh, 
the whole ball of wax. You know, some days he's just going to give it to you all day. Um, uh, and uh, medication is is something that has been considered from time to time. A lot for, of parents for you or for the, your <laughs> child. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you, when you fill this up with uh, vodka, it makes a lot of difference. You can take a you can take a whole bad day and make it into something special. Excuse me. Oh, yeah, that's what I'm talking about, a little straight vodka. You know, you can take a lot of that. But, no, it, <laughs> um, yeah, he did no, it, it, um, a lot of a lot of parents, I think, find it uh, necessary. Not necessary. A lot of parents have found it, found success in, in, um, in, in medicating uh, through, you know, uh, the pediatric physician. And would that be for behaviors? Yeah. That can that can uh, focus, you know, or 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 can uh, you know change behavior, uh, um, uh, you know, psychobiologically, um, as the brain functions and 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 uh, and the effect of certain um, uh, focusing uh, drugs. We are uh, we are thinking about that. You know, you are thinking of it. You know. So as of yet, your son has not been on. No, and I, it's a it's a hard decision. It is a very uh, hard call. You know, because um, well, I've seen kids turn around, turn on a dime, and all of a sudden, wow, they're focused. They they can stay on one subject. Uh, uh, they may not be able to uh, express themselves uh, any faster, or but they may not wander. You know, because another aspect of uh, of that uh, dysfunction is that. Uh, for instance, if we're talking about this, and then all of a sudden, uh, what about those boxes up there and things like that, you know? And, and uh, gee, those are lovely microphones. So tell me about what color is your hair, Randy? And that's a lovely blouse. But uh, what were we talking about? So you know, I, I've seen kids, and I, I've talked to other parents who you know have started uh, drug intervention, and and you find that they can talk, you know, about one thing for a while. And what does your son like? What What is his special interest that, that he enjoys he talking about? He loves trains. About? He loves trains. trains. I think a lot of, I, I, I've met other parents uh, who bring their child to see trains, either playing with them, uh, you know, he started off very young, way would he love them? Uh, something about the rotation of the wheels, I, I, I I, I don't know what it is. Something about the loudness of now we, uh, when we see transit trains or, or you know, we'll, we'll occasionally see a, a freight train. Um, he's just, uh, uh, it's a big machine. It's a very stimulus-oriented, uh, you know, noise uh, that they, they do uh, um, consistently respond to, uh, to noise or, or to loud uh, um, uh, music and stuff like that. So when that engine goes by or, or you know, when he's, you know, running his trains uh, downstairs, um, he, re he responds to that, you know, and, uh, and, and, and it brings light. To his eyes, and he and he's into it, which is great, you know. And um, I, he loves music too, uh, you know. I, I, if he likes a song, he'll just learn it in a heartbeat, and he'll just be wailing in the back as I'm driving. Really, along. that's, oh, yeah, that's yeah. fantastic. Yeah, I'm hoping to make a lot of money and, and put him on uh, Ed Sullivan one of these days. What? Is he Ed, still... No, Johnny Carson. No, what? <laughs> no, that would be Jay Leno. Pick, pick what? a live one. Please. Wait a minute, yeah. what's the new guy? <laughs> but, Jimmy Fallon. Jimmy Fallon. That's right. So. But uh, yeah, no, they, uh, yeah. So he likes music, and he and he and he and he likes uh, trains, and he and uh, and uh, and and he enjoys. Uh, uh He'll go on uh, uh, the the computer now, and there and there's lots of uh, sites uh, uh, that can um, interest him now. You know, lots of different um, uh, achieving sites and, and learning sites. So he is he very adept at computers. And he has become very interested in them, and and knowing how to how to work uh, certain aspects that surprise me. Right. You know. As most kids, I think, is their age, but uh, being autistic, it surprises me that he can do that, and he does quite well. <laughs> that is pretty amazing, yeah. I have to say. I, and I'd like to ask you, as a parent, what would you like his teachers, educators, administrators to know? What, what message would you like to give as a parent? Well, you know, I think it's just always uh, in, in, in important to uh, keep a democratic um, um, level in the classroom, I, I, I don't uh, I don't presume to know uh, the educational. You would probably know it better than I, uh, having had uh, experience in that um, area. But uh, I, I I presume uh, from our our um, our um, meetings with the educators that they uh, make an even playing field for the children, so that they are treated equally. 
um, in the classroom. Um, and with regards to his special ed teachers, I think that they're very good at knowing how to how to treat uh, all the kids in in the class so that they're all um, democratically. Um, equal, you know, so that no one's favored and so forth. And they can do that without, and still give the child the special attention that he or she right. that they and needs. Right, and also that maybe that that each teacher could give each child actually well, what they need. That, yes, I but, think you need to teach to the child and give them, that mm, particular child, what they need. Mm, and it's not going to be the same for every child. No, no, you do, and, and you don't want to spoil one and, and you know, and, and know that he's going to be bad, so you give him the attention, or, or, or he's going to be good, and, and, and you give him too much attention, and uh, oh, uh, that's probably a, a, a But as a parent, a you, example, you, you, but, you'd like to see some democracy now in that classroom. Well, I think that there is, you know, and I think that that's, you know, it makes the difference for him. Um, <clears throat> in a mainstream classroom, uh, that was not so. Um, mostly because of the dynamic. Of, so he started in mainstream. Yes, he did. And right. he's 10 years old now. Right. And he had pullouts and things like that. Pullouts are, are, are things that we you have a, a special ed teacher come in and, and, and uh, uh, he takes the, the hour or, or half hour and comes out and, and gives Zach a speech or, you know, a special, um, you know, uh, uh, occupational training or something like that, OT. OT. Uh, and special training and uh, and speech. So uh, in in the mainstream uh, educational um, network or whatever, yeah, he would have uh, those. But at the same time, um, I don't think that there was really an ability uh, uh, for that uh, mainstream classroom to provide a sense of equality. Because I mean, let's face it, you know, uh, uh, an autistic is going to demand. More attention, or he's just sure. going to float off into like nowhere, you know? Right, so, right. Depending on the personality and the needs, because every every child is different. Yes, yeah. Just because it, there could be two kids with the same disability, that doesn't make them the same. They, mm -hmm. they could, absolutely, yeah. The needs could still be very different. Yeah, they can. It's very interesting. I didn't think I was going to talk about this very long. Well, uh, I'm so happy that you came today. I really am. You, well, it's very nice of you to ask me. I, I really appreciate you being here. It's been wonderful to have you, Mark Daisy. Okay. Thank you. And me. if you could just give your website again, oh, maybe yeah. somebody wants to write to you, somebody wants to see you in a show, ask you a question. Sure. If you could just give that website again, that would be wonderful. Right. And we're going to send you away with another mm -hmm. song. Oh, yeah? Well. Oh, okay. Well, that'd be nice. Um, Mark Daisy, uh, dot com. That's easy enough, and uh, my uh, my uh, you know my email is on there, so anyone can contact me through through the website. I think that's the easiest way to go. You know, if you don't know how to do that, my son will come over and show you exactly how to how to do <laughs> and, it. And I don't doubt that for a minute. <laughs> thanks again. Thank oh, you thanks, so Randy. much for being Thank here. Thank you so very much. And we'd love to yeah. hear one more song okay. by well, you. I might be able to arrange something like that. Yeah. Him. Okay. Good. Thank.
Settle down far from town, I can make a pier Be gonna fish all of their fish right out of the bio. Sell me more to get even what you need, oh. Man, it's so fun to be on the show with Randy Lou. the Thank randy you. lupo show thanks for checking out the wow, show so be sure nice. to follow randy on twitter at randy lupo visit her website at randylupo.com thanks to broadband box office and vk media have a great great evening Hi, my name is Tom Ragu of the Tom Ragu Sit Down Comedy Show. You can listen to us at the Broadband Box Office. And for more information, please visit www.tomragu.com slash podcast. It's the Mark Daisy Show. Filled with gifts, fun, and surprises, and $20,000 in cash for every viewer. Well, maybe not. But we, we do talk about stuff and things that you might want to think about after, before, and during the show. It's engaging, uh, at least. So uh, come by, won't you? We're here at Facebook, on iTunes. Uh, we broadcast uh, from VK Media right here on the East Coast. And we're part of broadbandboxoffice.com. Check us out, come by, like us, do what you can, spend some time, take some time off, sit down, have a viewing. It's happening, it's now, it's controversial. Or maybe not. But uh, we, could, uh, we could use a couple of more viewers. Maybe starting with you. Won't you? Hi everybody, how are you? I'm Bob Gonzo of the Bob Gonzo Show. And I'm here to introduce the Bob Gonzo Show to you. Watch the Bob Gonzo Show on ComedyMondays.com and iTunes. Once again, ComedyMondays.com and iTunes. Watch it live or you can watch it on the archives, which means you can watch it forever. Bob Gonzo is the greatest show on the internet right now. It's the funniest, it's the sweetest, it's endearing. We have stand-up comics, we have bands, we have actors, we have people in the fashion industry. We have everything you need. So once again, the Bob Gonzo Show, the greatest show in the world. And if you watch it, you will become a better and happier and sweeter person. You, 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 you. Watch the Bob Gonzo Show, everybody. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hi, I'm Randy Lupo, host of the Randy Lupo Show on Broadband Box Office. Wait, is that a tongue twister or an alliteration? Come meet my favorite people, comedians, actors, writers, spiritual people, and everyone in between. I'm looking forward to seeing you.